On the 23rd of October 2023, a new co-op horror game released to Steam, gaining critical acclaim and garnering over 100,000 active players in less than a month. The game's name? Lethal Company. The core loop of looting monster-infested buildings with friends was a surefire win, and upon hitting the content creation space, it went viral. But something far more sinister was lying at its core. Where do the monsters come from? What is the company and the creature in the wall? Who built these buildings? By modding a no-clip camera and a variety of other tools into the game, I was able to pull back the curtain and dive deep into the game's inner workings, with the hope of being able to answer these questions once and for all. So join me in this, the first part of a series, where I uncover the secrets of Lethal Company. The first and easiest of the moons, experimentation is described as being arid and with low habitability worsened by industrial artifacts, seen on the surface in the form of large tanks, a water tower, railway infrastructure and a roofed building close to the landing site. Orbiting a gas giant known as Big Grin, the moon is said to have remained undiscovered for quite some time and on top of that it is suggested that when the moon was in use its function and occupants were a secret. By no clipping through the main door, we can see a feature that is unique to experimentation and experimentation alone. Behind it leads to a facility with a series of modelled corridors and rooms. These corridors reach a larger open room with holes in the ground and a constant audible engine noise coming from the middle of the room. Additionally, an invisible but collidable staircase is present in the room which leads to an upstairs that is similarly modelled. Were the developers' intentions to originally have the bases be connected directly to the door and have more explorable buildings on the surface? Or is this something that we may see more of in the future? Looking under the map, we get to see the entire facility. The base is generated upon landing on the planet's surface, and when interacting with the main base door you are teleported down under the map. This allows all the monsters in the game to remain active in the world and in the base, even if all of the players are only in one location. Looking at the base from a bird's eye view, we can also see some interesting things, including the map markers used by things like doors and items, as well as the real size of certain room pieces, such as how tall the entrance room actually is. Unlike experimentation, all the other moons share their themes with at least one other. Assurance, the first of the desert moons, features jagged and rocky canyons, and a more weathered and barren look compared to experimentation. The surface of the moon features a large pipe section running across from tanks near the main entrance, towards hills close to where the fire exit is located. Assuming the planet was once occupied for industry similar to experimentation, the pipeline could have once been used for resources such as crude oil or gas. All of the moons present this idea that they were once inhabited for industry, which would make some sense as to why the company has highlighted them as targets for salvaging. The real question, however, is if the company knew of the people who occupied these moons before, and exactly what they were doing. The surface of Assurance also features an oil tanker over a canyon and some other industrial components in addition to a large ladder used to get on top of the pipeline into the fire exit. Under the map, Assurance is identical to experimentation, having some instanced geometry scattered around in an identical skybox. Wow. A diverse and humid moon, and the first of the available moons to be forested, Vow is described as being previously inhabited by several colonies, but now it shows no signs of life. The area the player lands in is at the centre of a section of land surrounded by a body of water, almost forming a complete moat. However, it is blocked by a dam at one section where the fire exit is. The main base on Vau is of similar construction to the previous two, featuring a pipeline running along the surface. Noticeable differences include the incredibly rickety and dangerous bridge outside allowing for the crossing into the base earlier, as well as a cooling stack reminiscent of a power plant. This could indicate that the main base on Vau is set up as a power plant rather than a producing industry and that the pipeline could be importing a resource to burn such as natural gas or biofuel. Offense. The second of the desert planets, Offense is believed to have originally been part of Assurance, having separated in a collision event with an asteroid. The increased amount of artificial constructions on Offense, including a large pipeline, tanker, overturned train bed and a crane, are said to be older than the time when the moon separated, meaning they were originally built on the larger Assurance and have partially survived the collision event, causing Offense to become its own moon. The map area features steep canyons, some of which lead to open areas that could be used to leave, however they are all fenced off. No clipping outside of the main map area, we can see some additional assets including another oil slash water tank and fencing that is completely out of view, which may have been left over from an original design of the map or something else. 
March is the second of the intermediate maps, featuring the same forest theme seen in Val. March also features a few large bodies of water and various mud pits, explained by the log description, noting that the moon has constant drizzling weather. March is a fairly large and open map with little of note, the exception being the presence of three fire exits, making it the first moon to have more than one. The underside of March paints a similar picture, with no noticeable differences to the previously seen moons. The first of the hard moons and the first of the cold themed moons, Rend orbits a planet orbiting a white dwarf star, leading to its incredibly harsh climate. Notably, in its history log, the moon is described as having a reputation for having several famous travellers go missing while there, further stating that their bodies are unlikely to be found due to the planet's conditions. Famous travellers implies a presence outside of the company, or at least outside of the profession that you have in the company, as I would not exactly describe what you are doing as travelling. Outside of the scrap that you are there for, why would travellers want to visit a planet like this, let alone famous ones? Rend features a strip of lights for players to follow that leads to the main base, along the way passing by a small house which can be entered. One of the largest changes on Rend is that the main base has the aesthetic of a mansion, rather than the usual industrial setting. It is worth noting that both types of the base can actually be seen on the moons, rarely, but are weighted such that Rend and Dine are very likely to be mansion bases, and the others are all industrial. The mansion base includes a large staircase entrance, many corridors filled with bookshelves and rooms, including a kitchen, a fireplace room, and a larger room with upstairs section, as well as the incredibly off-putting fake outdoors rooms with tables and chairs. Almost identical to Rend, Dine is the second snow planet featuring the same kind of weather conditions and a light strip to lead players to the base. Very little of Dine's surface is notable, however there are small sections of pipe and fencing leading from the facility, pointing roughly towards where the ship lands, and the fire exit is located on a building elevated behind the ship, meaning it is inaccessible without the use of items such as the ladder or jetpack. Dine features the mansion interior and a large variety of high value loot, but no noticeable differences when viewed in Noclip. The final moon, considered to be the most difficult, is Titan. Titan is described as being a frozen flat landscape that has been completely mined for resources. The log notes it is easy to get lost within the giant industrial complex and that many entrances to it are littered around the landscape. However, only one is accessible in the actual game map. Titan is definitely the most visually striking moon, with the enormous facility immediately towering over you as soon as you get off the ship. Unlike the other hard moons, Titan has the standard industrial interior which makes sense given the description of the planet and what it was used for. Although it does raise questions as to exactly what the other two moons are doing with such large mansions built into them and why these mansions have such an industrial looking exterior. Were they built before the planets were frozen over, and were they used for the industrial purposes later on? When not landed on a planet, the ship can be viewed with the noclip camera to be in a separate scene. This area features a large red plane and what appears to be two spherical bodies perhaps representing a planet and a moon. Additionally, far out into the void is a clone of the player on a flat plane. Although this is actually in all of the maps and various places very far outside of the usual playing area. The, company. the final place of interest, and a particularly interesting one, is the Company. Said to be built on the moon 71 Gordian, the Company building is an ominous and large building comprised of a concrete platform and wall running along what appears to be an endless water. The wall includes a window where you are meant to sell your scrap and a mysterious entity in the wall. And although the flap opens when the scrap is to be collected, it's impossible to see what's behind it. The platform has a ladder hatch around the side of the shipping containers that can be taken down to a hidden section of path with a log at the end. Additionally, above that path is a platform with a drill that can be reached by doing a series of jumps over the scaffolding. The drill features what appears to be slots for two power apparatuses seen in the industrial bases. However, they currently cannot be placed into the drill. The drill also features a slot for something else and is covered in writing including the messages don't tell and the word battery on the back. Finally, the drill is on tracks and is pointing towards the wall of the company, where a circle is painted on. This could be related to another group, perhaps Sigurd from the logs, and their attempt to try and find out what is happening inside the company building. And some people in the community speculate that this will be the end game, and that after powering up the drill you will be able to see what's inside. But we can see right now with the power of Noclip, and it's not implemented yet. However, using Noclip, we can see behind the counter, and sure enough we can see the hook used for collecting scrap and the tentacle that kills players if they get too close. There are certain theories and mentions in the logs as to what the tentacle is, and perhaps what is going on inside the company building. However, those will all be saved for future videos. I hope you enjoyed this first look behind the scenes at Lethal Company, exploring some of the features and secrets of the map. In part 2 I will be looking at the large selection of monsters in the game using mods to get a closer look than ever before. If you liked the video, then give it a like, and if you have any feedback, then please leave a comment. 
Otherwise, subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to be notified when part 2 is out, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.